let's talk a little bit about Martin Luther King Day. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a day of love, celebrating black history, you know, everything like that, celebrating the legacy of um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I don't know if anybody's been on my TikTok. Oh, too sweet. <laughs> so I rinse it off under hot water and you have a way healthier, but just as delicious alternative. What I just exposed my ocular lobes to was the perfect visual representation of what whitewashing black history looks like. For the last 24 hours, I have just seen white America talk about how great of a man and how peaceful of a man Martin Luther King was. Do y'all forget that y'all called this man a terrorist? I'm just saying. Y'all love to gentrify the image of a man that you guys once marked as a terrorist by quote unquote just like this. But then make a conscious effort to demonize a man like this who was using his platform to protest peacefully. That's the thing, yo. Martin Luther King was way more radical than Colin Kaepernick was. But as we all know, black agendas will be rejected because it exposes white fragility and white fragility threatens black stability. Have a good day. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talk in the last uh in the last 24 hours because i just you know i wanted to wait and see all these people that were giving me pushback over the last seven months of uh, why you gotta always talk about race why you gotta make it all about this is that and a third colin kaepernick is a as a marxist and a communist da, 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 da. all these bad things about Pretty much my forefathers, my black pioneers, everything like that. And then you saw all these, you saw all these fake folk, all these fake folk acting like they cared about Martin Luther King. I sent Mel a, a screenshot. Don Cheadle changed his Twitter handle to fascists are gonna fascist. That was hilarious. I was just after seeing that, but That's hilarious. Melania, Melania Trump felt compelled to share something about Martin Luther King and he retweeted it with LOL on his Twitter page. And I'm kind of there with it because it's just like, why do you pick one day yeah. to, celebrate, to celebrate and pay homage and honor black history and black historians? And, mm -hmm. but then like, not only do y'all not take it seriously and you don't do it actively every day, but then you carry the same mindset that killed Martin Luther King. So what I'm trying to figure out is America, well, more specifically white America, and I guess I kind of want Eddie to answer this first for some odd reason. Um, what is it? Why are you, why are your cousins watching <laughs> Martin Luther King? Can you explain that to me, please? <laughs> well, well, because because uh Casper, it's it's quite simple. White people are too fragile. And uh, and uh, when it when it comes to the obvious things that's been put in your face, you know, because like that, this is what's been happening, right? This is it's always that's what this really this last year and kind of well, even before it kind of started in 2015. It's kind of been being shoved back into white people's faces, like, hey, there's a problem. And so, but uh, I'll just try to digress from that because we're talking about whitewashing Martin Luther King Jr. So, um. It's 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 that way of saying, oh, well, he was a good man. He was a good man who said good things. So we'll take like the good parts and we'll just like are the good parts to us. And we're and we'll and we'll just we'll celebrate that. But we'll, we'll but we won't talk about the fact that that, you know, he was called a terrorist, you know, by by white people, that he was not liked by the white moderate, which is the white majority of the time. We won't talk about that. It's kind of like the same way they do Martin Luther. They like like Martin Luther, the like because they laud him and they applaud him for doing that. But he was an anti-Semite. It's like people don't want to embrace the whole history of somebody. Mm -hmm. So they kind of pick and choose stuff to make themselves feel good about talking about this person. Nice. But also also if they told the whole story of Martin Luther King Jr., they would have to they would have to accept the fact that white people been trash a long time. <laughs> Wow. So like yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Wow. As a white person, my father's KKK. Like I said, you know, like I oh, was, oh yeah, yeah. Eddie, yeah, like, Eddie no. Like, yeah. I hard. found the hood when I was a kid, got terrified. Like that was my boogeyman. You feel me? Like 
My boogie man was, biopic on your life. I just need to see a biopic. Like uh, like yeah. So like you have you 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 have these things. Uh, because people would rather turn their eyes away from the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Right. Mm. They, they, they would rather turn from that because um, they can't handle it. Mm. Just like in the movie, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> and that's, and that's like, that's like 70% of white people in America. Yep. Yep. I'll give them 70. I'll try, I'll try to say, Thirty percent of us, we 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 own some good stuff, but, but yeah. the rest of y'all are. I don't know. I mean, I can't speak. Are, on the rest of y'all are powdered mayonnaise, is what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> powdered. Ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah, you ever just put powder in your mouth? I don't taste powdered that. Mayonnaise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, powdered mayonnaise. Oh, powdered. Um, like so Chi, Tyler, either one of y'all go first. Um, I guess for me, it always bothers me when everybody for 364 days of the year, you don't mind being racist, but then the one day of the year, you're like, unity, let, we're all in this together. This ain't high school musical. You don't believe we're all in this together. Stop lying. Mm. It are the same person that is calling Kaepernick. Akami, if you are saying that George Floyd deserved it, maybe if he wasn't a criminal, he wouldn't have died. But you want to post MLK, you are capping hard, madam. I need you to take several seats and evaluate your privilege before I'll smack you until you are a color of red. Because that really, it's like, if you're the same person who had a problem with Halle Bailey being Ariel in The Little Mermaid, mm. when you still want to talk about peace and unity, then it's like, you are kind of like that same person that says, oh, I'm not racist, I have a black friend. No, you are using this person as your get out of free. <laughs> Yo, did anybody see Jocelyn's comment? <laughs> Not racist yes. equal. Well, wow. What it feels like when a person says, I'm not racist, I have a black friend. It's like, no, no. Yeah. Like Bad. you're using that person as your shield away from being perceived oh. as racist, but you still are very much racist. You just do not want to admit that to yourself that you have. Yeah. Some prejudice and that is fine i'd rather you be a racist to my face instead of saying i love you but then behind my back you hope i have a bullet in it wow oh. dang sister broke it down okay yeah Hell it. yeah wow okay yeah, yeah. so open the hood I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I personally believe that a a strong black man is scary to white America. Mm. I believe that they're trying to purposely uh, <laughs> purposely they're trying to take the power away from who who Dr. King really was. So they will say he's a terrorist. They will say he's this, he's that. But in actuality, no, Dr. King was not a terrorist. God, Dr. King was a Christian man, he was a Baptist. He used a lot of the Bible, the same Bible that y'all white people be wanting to quote and be wanting to say, oh, this is our Bible, but then use it for white supremacy. Yeah, that Bible. Okay. Um, and I just personally believe that white people, truthfully, uh, not all white people, but I'm talking about the racist white people, they do not want to see black people excel. They do not want to see black people go up you know, in the world. They want us all to be criminals and thugs and, you know, rappers and, you know, uh, getting drunk in the hood and, you know, never amounting to anything. Mm. But when they see black people going to college, getting educations, becoming doctors, becoming the president of the United States, becoming all these things, that is scary to them. They're like, mm. no, no, we cannot, we can't have this. We can't have this. We need to look, make the black man look like nothing more than a thug, a gangster, a hoodlum, a good for nothing, up to no good always. That's what they want us to be. So, yeah, you know, the same thing with Dr. King. They All they wanted him to be was a thug, a, a terrorist, you know, nothing up to no good. But we know that Dr. King stood up for all people. Yeah. 
tells you what my mom said. Yeah. As a white person, I tell you that you are spot on. Many, many white people are terrified of strong black people because it is a threat to their white superiority. Exactly. Mm -hmm. See, like that's the that's the thing. It's the it's the uh like we talked about last night, it's the old way of thinking that is dying, right? As I said last night, as more people are made, as people uh, begin to mix and they're, it's not everybody staying with their you know color anymore, right? Because that used to be a thing. Like you can't do that. Like what it was, it was legal. It was illegal forever for uh, people to marry that were not the same race. And yeah, dude, uh, school, the online. So the I told y'all I go I, I online classes, but I I'm getting a degree from Liberty University, right? Yeah. So I found out the history of Liberty last year meeting one of these um. Ghanaian dudes um through facebook and he was breaking it down like the history of like liberty university and he was telling me that like you know back in the day at liberty because jerry falwell senior martin Lu he was the he's the founder of liberty university he was martin luther king jr's biggest opposition and this is the christian the white moderate that he spoke of he was speaking of that man and yeah. back at liberty you know they used to tell um they used to tell like they they won they 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 fought against desegregation um yeah. they were like okay if you're if your black kids want to come to our schools especially the black men they have to be married because we don't want them integrating with our white women and everything like that i'm so serious mm -hmm. like they you know and the reason that they had to um they had to integrate was because they wouldn't get their um they wouldn't get their tax breaks for being a nonprofit because they were trying to you know keep people out you know try and make it yeah. a private institution everything like that and like you know when you really just get to understand the like the history of christianity and its role with white supremacy it rocks your mind and then when you think like the people that you proclaim that proclaim the same Jesus you serve are the same mm. people that are trying to muzzle you like, yo. Mm. And then for me, I get annoyed when people want to quote Martin Luther King, but then be telling me to shut the, shut the, you know what up. Yeah. Yep. And I'm saying the same things that he's saying. Only difference is I, we have a BLM now. Yep. We're not saying free yep. We're not, you know, it's a, I keep telling people, these are the same songs from the fields that just got a different beat. That's yep. it. Yep. And see, like, the thing is, is that, is that, uh, as that, as that tension will, will, will continue on as long as that, that old way is dying. Like when someone's dying and they're fighting for their life, you know, they're trying to hold on, they're trying to take as many people with as them as they can, you know, like, like my dad was trying to per like bring that on, and like I broke out of it. You have people like, like in the Midwest, like up here, like people are like low key racist. They're prejudiced, but like people don't realize the spectrum of prejudice and racism. Like they huh. think it's just this one thing, but it's like no, it's like your nationalism is like, like your it's race, like it's prejudice, it's racism. Like you don't think like, like they, they don't think it is. Like they're so delusional. Like people it's still idolatry. think the is president, you know what I mean? Like, they, is it not idolatry? Well, yeah, hundred like, percent. They don't, but they don't want to talk about that more than you value the mission of God. That's idolatry. They don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, and and you know, the other day I was having a conversation with my stepdad, and we were talking about uh, the police, right? And a lot of people don't realize even policing comes from slavery. Uh, when the slave master used me on horseback looking over the cotton fields of the slaves that were picking cotton, that's police. That's where police came from in our country. So it's like you wonder why black people have such attention with the police. It's because of the, the pain and, and the trauma that's been passed down to us from generation to generation to generation. And it's just the feeling of a black man when you get stopped by the police. You feel like your life's in danger. Like, and that's something that white people will never understand. Like they will never understand that the terror that, that can come over you just having a police officer stop you. And it's like, you know, every time I've encountered the police, you know, I've been stopped for no reason, you know, just walking down the street, trying to go to work. A police just pulls over and says, hey, come here. 
you know, let me see your ID. Where are you going? Where you know all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, sir, I'm just going to work. I work right here. I'm trying to make it to work. It's literally like I got like ten minutes to get to work. I'm like, I'm just trying to get to work on time. You know, I'm trying to go to work. And he's just questioning me for no reason. And I'm just like, really, you know. And, and in that moment, there was just that that fear, you know, in the back of my mind. Like, if this officer really wanted to just shoot me right now or accuse me of something, he can. Because that's how, uh, not all police, because I've met some great police officers. My dad was a correctional officer for most of my life. He always taught me, you know, respect the police, respect authority. And I, I always have. I always have the utmost respect for our police. But at the same time, it's like you have a lot of racist, racist cops out there that just want to mess with colored people. And it's like, that's the reality of it. You know, that's the reality of what we face in this country as, as black men and women, you know, people of color. So, um yeah, it's it's just crazy, man. It's it's crazy. Yeah, the the movie Thirteenth. I saw it was excellent. You got to watch that now. Like some, you know, some some conservative white people might choke on some things, <laughs> but you, know, you got to watch it. You, I watched it. Now listen, my my wife, she's Latin. Her parents Latin. We were watching it. Her mom walks in at like one part of it, right? And she's right. She's grew up in the uh, mostly. Uh, we're, 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 we're in like a super white evangelical uh, word of faith type church and uh, pro Trump. And so uh, she saw some of it and she was just like, they're just trying to make Trump to be a bad person. I'm like, I'm like, mom, you just walked in like an hour in the thing. Like you, you come yeah. in and you see one part and it's like a picture of Trump with this song. Like, you know, what it was like, it was like a rap song. It was like, they're trying to keep us down. In the yeah. Yeah. And then, and then she's like, oh my gosh. But like, but but that's how like most people react to prejudice and racism. They come in in the middle of it, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, this isn't." They're just trying to say something bad. But it's like, no, nah, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. been this way a long time. You're just you're just coming in at this one intersection right here. But you got to yeah. do the whole history. You got to learn how we got here, and how yeah. you can make take steps and do something now to change it. Mm-hmm. And like, that's really what we should be on. Like, that's what I'm on. Like, I'm like white people change. <laughs> Change, white people. <laughs> Change. And he's like, and he's like throwing thunderstones at Pikachu. Why don't you just evolve already? Like, yeah, yeah. I know that is the truth, though. It is. But... Oh my goodness! I'm oh. so glad there is another person on this panel that watched Thirteenth. I'm was... watching it, and you know it me, Matt. It's free. It's free. It's free. Go watch listen, it. Free. Listen, I, I listen. Watch it. He knows I can't watch certain like movies that touch on like black mm. trauma because I, I do get triggered. Like I, 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 get, yeah. I get really, really yeah. dark movies. Um yeah. that might be yeah, yeah be careful with that. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say um there were parts I I was like that's horrible to see. Like I didn't know like, there's this um there's this like what was it? I think it was Dear White People and yeah. your white people the episode where like reggie almost got shot by like the school cop mm-hmm. yo i had to go to work right after that and i remember i was texting yeah. mel and she was like and I, I, and everybody i say this on every platform i own i'm just gonna keep it a buck but like when i see stuff like that i have to be very very careful because i'll get in my flesh and mm-hmm. i'll yeah. start developing like a, I, I know my heart i will start to develop some type of like extreme phobia yeah. for like white people after that and you know, i try not to look at them like that because you know never you're not supposed to know people from the flesh that's what the book says but yeah. when i see stuff like that and it's li- and i go out of my way to expose myself to stuff like that i just have to be careful you know what i'm saying yeah. like it it I, I know i know my limits i'm very sensitive when it comes to stuff like that that's all right and um For tonight's homework, um, I had to pick a project. I had to pick a piece of media that was from 2005 to 2020. So anything from that 15 year span, I'm thinking, okay, I decide to do when they see us. If you haven't watched it, I've been watching it one episode at a time because Uh, watching one episode really emotionally drained me. But, I told you that two years ago, yo. Yeah, but what I'm saying is when I was doing my assignment, the question was, why was this? Why do you connect to it? And I said, 
I connect to it because there were a few times in my life where I was stopped by a cop for literally nothing. And I can remember this one particular moment. I was walking to work, but I had to drop off my younger brother. At the time he was like six at my aunt's. So we're walking, cop sees me, he stops us. And instinctively I put my brother behind me cause I'm like, look, whatever happens, I'm making sure he's good. And mm. this cop is like, where are you going? And I'm like, to work, where do you work? Like just asking me 10 questions. And I'm like, sir, I thought you were asking me where I was going. I didn't need, I didn't know you were asking for my whole life story, you know? Mm. And eventually he just drives off and my brother looks at me and he's like, are you okay? And I didn't realize that I was holding my breath the whole time. And I just remember this one particular scene of when they see us, when Kevin, um, his older sister comes in and he's like crying and he's like, can you please sign this paper so you can take me home? I cried so much because oh seeing that kid, I was seeing my brother because I was like, mm -hmm. I would never want my younger brother to be in that situation where he's being held and I can't take him home with me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that whole assignment, I just said, look, this happens all the time. And what I love about Ava DuVernay is that she is not afraid to say this is what happens every single day, whether you want to admit it or not whether you feel comfortable with it or not this is what happens this is our reality whether you experience it or not this is the reality yeah, so, like, yeah. again it was think, a powerful series I, I just i can't watch it again because it just hurt me emotionally too much to watch it yeah i think what it is though is when it comes to like us as a people and i say just us as a human race of people like we always think that racism has to be a voluntary thing as if mm. we aren't born sinners you know what i'm saying like we yeah. sin on accident we were born to like we were born to naturally sin you know what i'm saying so people think that and i think it's an arrogance thing personally when i'm like yo that's being racist they're like no it's not because i would know if i was being racist i'm like yeah. No. Well, I guarantee you didn't know how to be an honor roll student until you learned how to study. Like I had, like I okay. So growing up, like, or uh, like, pseudo trained to be a racist. Um, I had to deal with that, and I that still lingered into my teenage years, where yeah. you would you would just think of something like, mm -hmm. and it, and it's not even like a. Like I, I don't, you know, cause I had, I had been training myself like this isn't right. I'm not going to be that. Mm -hmm. But then like, you're like, oh dang, man, why did I think that? And then mm -hmm. even just a few years, a few years ago, I had to deal with the fact that I was racist against my own people. I, I seriously like God dealt with me on it. Cause I was getting to a point where I was hating white people. Mm. Like with almost the same veracity that my dad hated black people. Wow. And I was like, like, I, was like uh, dude. Or I wouldn't know if it's considered race. Well, you probably just, it was like self-hatred. Do you think like it was like a, a sense of self-hatred, like from what you came from, I guess? Well, like, no, nah, man, like, honestly, like I would, I would, like, I just hated white people. Like, mm -hmm. like I would, like, I even have a thing, like anytime, like a, like an old white lady cuts us off in the store, I'm like, white people. <laughs> like me and like me and my wife still do it, but like I was like, man, like I was like, I was like, man, I'm beginning to really just hate white people. Like yeah. just have a really bad taste in my mouth. So yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it was still racism. It was just against my own people. And so yeah. like it it can come in any any way, shape, or form. Like you said, it's sin, but we gotta call it what it is. We have to call yeah. it sin. It's the sin of racism, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we want to jump on alcoholism. Alcoholism's a sin, right? Abortion, but but anytime racism's brought up, it's just a sin problem. No, bro, it's a racism problem. Call it yep. what it is and call it out and put it because right it says in the Bible, you should not talk about the things in the dark. You you know what I'm saying? That you you mm -hmm. got you gotta put it out into the light and get the light mm -hmm. on it. 
because that's mm. when that's when you're able to see it for what it really is, examine it from all sides and say, how do I have a part and play a part in this? And how can I play a part in correcting this? So until people until people get past the white guilt, put down the white rage and put being like, you know, immature and childish about it, grow up a little bit, then they can kind of see, OK, I, let, let me accept where I've been prejudiced, racism and, and racist. And now how can I go to fix that? Amen. Yeah, um, I've definitely had to repent of racism plenty of times, you know, especially right after the George Floyd thing happened. I remember getting on the bus and the bus driver was white. And I get on the bus and he was like, he's like, hey, how you doing, buddy? And then in my mind, I'm like, oh, how am I doing? Like, like I felt like anger from him even like asking me a question, like, who are you to ask me? But I had to like go to the Lord and be like, Lord, please don't let me hate white people, please, Lord. Like, they're nice. Like, I know nice white people. Um, Yeah, help, help me to love, help me to love them, despite the fact that I may uh, disagree with some stuff like white people do at times and you know and and keep in mind like i went to all white schools growing up well an all white elementary school and most of my friends growing up were white so i grew up around white people like basically throughout my childhood um so yeah it's definitely you know you got to make sure that the thing that you're trying to fight against that you don't also become that yeah and i think it's easy to fall into the flesh and become the exact thing that you hate sometimes. And you got to ask the Lord, like, help me to check my own heart and help me to make sure it's, it's kind of like the kid that gets bullied his whole childhood and then he becomes the bully. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Like, like you have to make sure that you're not becoming what you hate because it's easy. It's really easy to do that. That didn't cut you essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm.